And so since the disease was first named in 1906 by physician Alois Alzheimer, the prevailing hypothesis as, as to what causes the disease has been the amyloid plaque. We've yep. got to get the plaque out of the brain. Right. Nonetheless, you know, research has been a dismal failure into the, you know, a pharmacologic treatment for the condition. Mm -hmm. Alzheimer's disease disease trials have a 99.6% fail rate. It's worse than for cancer. It's worse than for heart disease. It's really, really, really bad. Yeah. Okay. And... And it's just been really upsetting and heartbreaking for not just the research community, of course, but for patients, people, you know, families like mine who have been touched by dementia. And so the field was starting to, particularly as it pertained to this hypothesis, dubbed the amyloid hypothesis in terms of, you know, the, the causal factors of Alzheimer's disease, have been had really been losing steam up until 2006 because... Well, there are a few key reasons why it was beginning to lose steam. One, they've succeeded actually at reducing amyloid plaque in the brains of people with Alzheimer's disease, and yet that hadn't coincided with an impact on the clinically meaningful symptoms of the of the disease, meaning the cognitive dysfunction. So you're saying they were successful in getting some of the plaque out, but people didn't improve? Correct. Oh, I didn't know that. Yes. That and also healthy brains produce amyloid beta, and there's a degree of amyloid burden in the brains of people who are cognitively healthy. So there doesn't seem to be a strong correlation between the amyloid burden and a person's cognitive abilities. So... Oh my gosh, Max, I had like an expert brain researcher on the... Okay, keep doing right. Yeah, so, okay. well, and this is, is and this is illustrated um, most clearly by the recent accelerated approval by the FDA of... Um, monoclonal antibodies that are very successful in terms of reducing the amyloid in the brain, but it v nominally improves cognitive function and, in fact, in, in, uh, increases risk for brain atrophy. It accelerates meta analyses have actually shown that these drugs um, accelerate brain atrophy, which is no bueno, Le can potentially lead to brain swelling, brain bleeds, and even death. So the amyloid is not the full picture, but nonetheless, this 2006 paper seem to really renew fervor with regards to this path to developing a drug to, quote-unquote, cure, or at the very least, treat Alzheimer's disease. And it had subsequently been cited thousands of times in the medical literature. I mean, I've, I've definitely had people talking about it on the podcast over the years. Yeah, well, it's... As the temps search arise, I get that familiar urge to refresh my closet. But I am done wasting money on trendy pieces that I wear once, which is why I'm obsessed with quince. The clothes are timeless, Elevated, built to last, no insane markup. I'm talking about 100% European linen shorts and dresses that started just 30 bucks. Italian leather platform sandals, luxe swimwear that looks straight off a of runway but costs half of what you'd expect. Quince partners directly with top tier factories, cutting out the middleman so you get designer quality at a price that actually makes sense. And they only work with ethical, responsible manufacturers who care about people and the planet. Personally, I stocked up on the linen tees and the tanks, and believe it or not, a killer summer dress. Occasionally, I do wear dresses. And honestly, it finally feels like my wardrobe matches my standards. Upgrade your wardrobe at quince.com. Luxury should never mean compromise. Team, give your summer closet an upgrade with quince go to quince.com slash jillian for free shipping on your order and 365 day returns that's q u i n c e dot com slash jillian to get free shipping and 365 day returns quince.com slash jillian they're at the scene of the crime so it makes logical sense right and before yeah. we had you know all sorts of biomarker testing and, and the degree of, of imaging capability that we have today i mean it it was a hypothesis that, you know, that f at least logically was very easy to buy into. Yeah. Similar to cholesterol in our arteries, right? Atherosclerosis, like cholesterol is always there, so it must be cholesterol. That's the source of the problem. That's the causal factor, right? But that's mistaken correlation for causation, right? If you were to look at a house on fire and notice the smoke, I mean, smoke is always there when there's a fire you might be inclined to think that the smoke caused the fire, right? No, it's the fire that's causing the smoke. If there were firefighters on site, you might think to yourself, hey, maybe the firefighters caused the fire. So we can't mistake correlation for causation. And nonetheless, that's what's occurred seemingly over the past hundred you know, or so years since these plaques were initially discovered in the brains of cadavers who have died with Alzheimer's disease. Wow. 
And so, so it's a huge problem. Essentially, the fraud is that another researcher, a Vanderbilt uh, University researcher named Matthew Schrag, recently, um, about two years ago, discovered that a lot of the data that was published in that early paper was completely fraudulent. It was basically like Photoshop copy, cheap Photoshop copy and paste jobs that passed through somehow the peer review process because they don't look at imagery. And these were, this was data that was presented um, in a format called a Western blot analysis, which is visual um, as opposed to just, you know, numbers in a spreadsheet. And, um, and he noticed that it was a, essentially a cut and paste job, that it was completely fraudulent. And actually over the past six months, the paper was finally retracted, which represents billions of dollars of misplaced research funding, misplaced hope and what have you. And it's, it's really sad. It's a big problem. And it's, and this actually just happened again. It was published in science. So science magazine did the first expose. So the, the story was broken by science magazine. It's kind of surprising to be honest, but at least there's. Okay. Well, it so can have some faith in something, maybe. Well, that's why, know who to trust anymore. Well, exactly, and that's why people that you know uphold science is an it's a it's a method, right? It's a method of asking questions and investigating in hopes of finding answers to this human endeavor, right? Yeah. But it's also an industry. It's also something that is you know carried forth by fallible humans, humans who have egos, who have reputations to uphold, and. I think, you know, it, it it is a big sort of question, like how, you know, who who you can trust, right? And I'm a big advocate of science. I think science is really important, but there is a lot of fraud within the industry. There's a lot of conflicts of interest, which we've all been talking about lately with regards to the I dietary want you guidelines. To, to elaborate on that actually, but we'll Active Skin Repair utilizes a molecule called hypochlorous acid. Now, when you apply it to the skin, the molecule works by mimicking the natural immune response to cleanse, soothe the irritation, reduce inflammation, and support healing. Active Skin Repair can be used to treat a wide range of skin issues, including cuts, scrapes, burns, sunburns, diaper rashes, and other types of skin damage. And it's also safe and non-toxic, making it suitable for use on all skin types, all parts of the body, and you can even use it on rosacea, eczema, and acne-prone skin. With over 500,000 happy customers, thousands of five-star reviews, and ingredients so safe and clean they can be used by the youngest member of the family to the oldest, you now have one simple solution for all of your family's skin health needs. So visit ActiveSkinRepair.com to learn more about Active Skin Repair and to get 20% off your order, use the code Jillian. Again, that's ActiveSkinRepair.com and the code is Jillian. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed the podcast, please like, comment, subscribe, and share. And make sure to let me know what guests you want to see on in the future.